please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Well, JSW Steel will make its entry into the Nifty today, and I caught up with the chairman of the JSW Group, Mr. Sajan Jindal, who spoke about the journey of the company, domestic steel demand, the trade war fears, and the group's electric vehicle dream. Adds that it was his childhood dream to build a car. No, it's very exciting. Um... I mean, uh, you feel that you are, your, your whole process, your journey is vindicated uh, when you feel that uh, you achieve the first milestone mm -hmm. of any, any large company of reaching uh, 100,000 crore market cap. So uh, it, it makes you feel good, you feel satisfied, so, but this is the first step. The journey has been such as well, the steel demand, the way it's grown in the last decade or so, ups and downs. And, uh, JSW Steel has been up there and been battling all the challenges as well. So let's talk about demand. We are uh, you know, coming to an end of a monsoon season. And over the past decade or so, some believe that maybe the first half of the year has been one of the best we have seen in close to a decade in terms of steel demand. Your comment on that, sir? Well, uh, steel industry is cyclical in its nature. Yeah. So uh, you can never predict uh, a uh, secular uh, growth or secular one one way street mm -hmm. it's always ups and downs and uh, you have to have a you know a nerves of steel yeah. to be a steel man or be uh, in the in the business of steel so uh, so therefore uh, we are not uh, really uh, as steel producers we don't look at uh, quarterly performances or mm -hmm. uh, you know we we are always prepared for the downfall and uh, but what we have done over the years in JSW Steel is that we have made a very strong balance sheet. Mm -hmm. We have been very careful and very conservative in our approach, in our growth, while staying aggressive on the growth, but we have stayed conservative on our capital spend. Is there a possibility that steel is a lead indicator in comparison to our GDP? Do you believe that the steel industry can uh, you know, grow faster than Indian GDP? So normally, uh, what, what I've seen is that over the years, over the last 20 years, that uh, the, if, if the GDP is growing at over 7%, mm -hmm. then the steel industry tends to grow at 1.2 times yeah. the GDP. If GDP, when, when GDP touched 9%, steel mm -hmm. industry grew 1.5 times that. Right. And if, if the GDP grows at 5%, then we steel industry grows at 1 or 2%. Yeah. So it's it's quite uh, like let's say a very it's not there is no standard uh, norms. Just going by what you're saying, sir, you know there could be a bit of, at least a bit of a steady phase for the steel industry for the no, coming we, year. We believe within JSW Steel, we believe that uh, we are we are in for a good run because right. uh, the uh, economy is doing well, and uh, we believe that economy will continue to Indian economy will continue to do well because of the uh, huge uh, emphasis on the infrastructure development, on mm -hmm. housing, on various various initiatives that this government has taken. Yes. Uh, so we believe that the uh, steel demand will continue to be very strong. Over the last year or so has been the tariffs that uh, the United States has imposed. Maybe it's a war between the United States and China, but the global steel environment could get, you know, go could go into a bit of a tizzy. Trump is uh, somebody who doesn't like to keep things uh, in, in the normal situation. You know, he likes to challenge yeah. everything and he does it very, he likes to abrupt things. Right. So uh, every morning he wakes up and he likes to abrupt things, right? <laughs> so so that's, his, uh, that's his style and, uh, and we have to accept it. And, uh, and, and I think the, the lobby, the steel lobby in the US is very effective and very strong. Mm -hmm. And they have convinced uh, President Trump to, to put in this duty. In fact, the US have always been $100, uh, or let's say 10%, 15% higher price than the world price, because they have anti-dumping duties against every country in the world. Right. But now with this 25% duty, they are giving it even more uh, protection to the American steel industry. We want to understand uh, your plans in terms of, you know, the entire electric car, uh, uh, mm. you know, uh, that news that's been playing out as well. JSW as a group, you know, looking at that space rather interestingly. Yeah. What's, what's... Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not something which is uh, our core, core st uh, strength. Uh, core area, but uh, it's it's uh, driven out of passion mm -hmm. uh, because I'm a uh, auto freak, mm -hmm. and I always, you know, since my uh, young days, 
I've been uh, an auto guy and uh, I've worked in the auto garages and I, while I was doing my engineering, I was training in an auto garage. So it's been always my childhood dream to build a car. So I feel now, you know, electric car gives, a, gives me an opportunity to enter into a new field, new, uh, because car industry will go through a huge change. Yeah. And electric car is a, uh, uh, a different animal compared to a normal car. Mm. So we are going to uh, launch that and we are going to make a real bloody well, bloody good design and really good car. That's, that's the whole idea. Well, Mr. Jindal, you know, I, I knew your passion for uh, mm -hmm. the steel industry, cement, energy as well. But cars, that's something I didn't know. Just catching you off guard now, uh, <laughs> which is that dream car? That, oh, my uh, God. No, there's nothing like a dream car. I mean, with, with time, the dream car keeps on shifting. It used to be uh, Mercedes uh, Sports at one time. Then it was a Porsche yeah. at another time. So it keeps on shifting, keeps on changing. So today, there is no real uh, dream, dream, dream car. But, uh, but car as in car uh, is, a, is a dream. All right, then you can catch that conversation all through the day here on CNBC TV 80. But let's shift focus then back to the markets <coughs> and to the pharma space in particular. Dr. Reddy, so that's going to be the stock uh, in focus today on the backs of uh, the Subox on uh, hearing next week. Ekta, tell us, uh, run us through all those details. Well, you know, this saga about Suboxone, which is an anti-drug addiction drug for Dr. Reddy's, has been going on all the way since June and July of 2018. Now, I just want to give you a quick background on how important next week would probably be is because uh, Dr. Reddy's, remember, had brought, bought this particular ANDA or this particular drug from Teva all the way back in June of 2016. Eventually, Dr. Reddy's received approval for this drug, Suboxone Generic, on the 15th of June 2018, but they had a litigation pending with the innovator of the drug, which is Indivio. But nonetheless, Dr. Reddy has went ahead and, uh, you know, launched the drug at risk in the U.S. market because they got the U.S. approval, but they had a litigation pending at the same time. So then the litigation actually didn't work in their favor or, you know, Indivio basically went and moved against the court with regards to this particular launch. There was a temporary injunction by the court. This temporary injunction then turned into a permanent injunction in the month of July, telling Dr. Reddy's that you have to solve your outstanding patent litigation with Indivior, only then can you enter the market. Now, Dr. Reddy's has challenged this particular appeal, mm. and now this particular appeal was then expedited and is now going to be heard next week, So that, or in the first week of October. That's the kind of date that we're working with, and that's the reason why Dr. Reddy's would be in focus. Remember, Suboxone is around a $750 million drug opportunity in the U.S. right now. And though Dr. Reddy's might have lost out in terms of time, uh, they can probably still make up to around 50 to 70 million dollars in the next couple of months if in case they do launch it. There are lots of ifs and buts and the market has changed because, Subox because Indivior themselves have gone and launched a drug which is an alternative to Suboxone, mm -hmm. which does the same thing and you can only, you know, only need to take it once a month okay. as opposed to taking Suboxone every day. So that is one of the key things to watch out for because the market market is probably shrinking, plus you have other companies which are entering the market such as Teva with a different, uh, you know, a higher dosage of Suboxone. So there are a lot of, um, uh, you know, different uh, variables which have taken place in the U.S. market. So maybe the opportunity itself is lower, but nonetheless, it would still be an important opportunity for Dr. Reddy's. Okay, all right, uh, Ekta, thanks so much for that. Well, uh, the high-powered GST Council is all set to deliberate on a whole host of issues today. CES debate is back and is expected to be the top agenda. More on that when we return. Well, the overnight handover was positive for the U.S. markets. Uh, the Asian markets, they're more or less mixed today. But we are coming off a pretty bad series, actually. But good to see, at least for starters, the SGX Nifty is indicating a 40-point bump up. Ekta, how are you reading the market cues? Well, uh, Nigel, you know, things remain volatile, especially on an intraday basis, because whatever the SGX indicates, the second half of the trading session just takes its own sort of cue. So for yesterday, um, yes, we did see that kind of volatility come through. We had the mid-cap index, which really outperformed. But overall, for the September series, like you've been pointing out, it's been a very rough series for us. It's been the worst in 2018. It's probably been one of the worst that we've seen in many years as well. Uh, so the Nifty was down 700 points 
points in the September series. We had the Nifty Bank, which uh, really underperformed with a cut of around 11 odd percent. The Nifty Mid Cap Index was down 12 percent. We had a double whammy with what's happening with the NBFCs, as well as um, you know the ILNF has downgrade, which took place, and uh, not to mention crude prices, which hit around 82 on an in on an intraday basis in this particular September series. The rupee depreciated. So all of those factors just came and hit us in one series. Mm -hmm. Whether October is going to be better or not, let's see. Time will tell. But it is earnings season, which starts in October as well. Well, for uh, what the current cues are, is that the CP rates of the NBFCs is still cont it still indicates continued tightness. You know, you have indications that papers are going at around 11 odd percent. There is lack of demand in the market, etc. So that obviously continues and weighs on the market uh, primarily. Uh, but overall, in terms of the global space, it was okay. So the U.S. markets ended higher, and uh, we have a lot of cues to watch out for. So a lot of moving parts as well. So for example, we have the GST meeting, plus we have the government, which is going to be announcing the second half borrowing calendar today as well. So that would be important in terms of the total figure which will come out and whether the bond markets will be happy with that supply figure or not. Uh, we do have the RBI policy also, which uh, to reckon with next week. So that will be important. And expectations really are building up of, you know, maybe a possible hike and other measures in order to ease the liquidity in the market as well. Now, FII surprisingly net bought around 552 odd crores in yesterday's trading session. DII's net sold 187 odd crores, but we need more evidence in terms of determining a trend on what's happening on the flow picture. Okay, all right, Ekta, thanks so much for that. Well, moving on then, the GST Council, the biggest decision making body under the goods and services tax, will meet for the 30th time today. And on the agenda are a host of issues. Timsi Jaipuria now joins us. Uh, Timsi, take us through all the items on the Council's agenda as far as today's meeting is concerned. High Power GST Council is all set to deliberate on a host of issues when it will meet for the 30th time in New Delhi. To begin with, the Council is likely to consider Kerala government's request for allowing a levy of 10% cess on SGST on all commodities consumed in Kerala to raise revenues for flood rehab work. As per initial estimates, if the Council agrees to a 10% cess, then the move is likely to mobilize around 60 to 70 crores per month. However, this would need to be initiated through a different format of returns which will have to be developed afresh by GSTN and that would take another six months. Sources further added that Nordblock is keen on getting a 1% cess on SIN goods for Pan India rather than a state-specific cess. Also on the agenda is a detailed discussion on the current revenue trends across India. According to the data, the revenue deficit of all states and union territories has started showing a declining trend. This has reduced from a 16% last year to 13% uh, in April to August this fiscal. Also, the Council is likely to take stock of current state of complaints under the anti-profiteering law. Sources said the Council is likely to discuss and reconsider the penalty amount of profiteering, which is currently at 10,000 rupees. As per the data submitted by National Anti-Profiteering Authority, the Director General for Anti-Profiteering has 289 complaints which are pending for investigations. The sectoral analysis of complaints also shows that maximum number of complaints have come regarding FMCG sector, followed by constructions and restaurants. Apart from this, the Council will also deliberate and uh, discuss the report submitted by Finance Secretary Hasmukadia on a detailed analysis of revenue deficit, especially in the case of Puducherry, JNK, Punjab and Himachal Pradesh. Also on agenda is a proposal mooted by Punjab to address difficulties arising out of recent amendments in Rule 96 of CGST and SGST and also a consideration for exemption of IGST on goods imported for Kerala's rehab. Let's see what finally transpires when the council meets. Back to you. Okay, all right, Tim C. Thanks very much for that. So, CES uh, issue is in fact a top priority for the GST council. Uh, Sapna Das joins in to tell us more. Well, we are clearly given to understand that uh, the CES debate is back on the agenda and probably it's the top agenda item uh, in the GST Council meeting today uh, that's going to unfold during the day. Having said that, in the Kerala FM and the Union Finance Minister's meeting, various options have been discussed on the CES issue. Uh, but we are also given to understand that the centre probably uh, was not or rather uh, does not appear to be in favour of uh, a state-specific CES because that will be problematic. Uh, among the options uh, that have been discussed uh, 
uh, is also this 1% levy or 1% says on sin goods. We are also given to understand that uh, expanding the reach of the National Calamity Contingent Duty, the NCCD, could also be an idea. Uh, you know, in the past, the NCCD was also levied on motor vehicles. As of now, the NCCD levy is restricted to tobacco products uh, as well as cigarettes. So probably something, you know, may unfold over there. Not very sure about it. Uh, also, the fact remains that the NCCD proceeds go to the NDRF, which is the National Disaster Relief Fund. Uh, well, uh, we are given to understand that probably a concrete proposal from the Revenue Department has not really firmed up, but definitely the CES debate is back on the agenda and it's the top priority uh, agenda item in the GST Council meet today. Well, in the CNBC TV in exclusive, Kerala Finance Minister Thomas Isaac says that the CES proposal will not burden other states and 10% says will get additional funds of uh, around 70 to around 75 crores a month. It will give us uh, uh, additional from 70 crores uh, a month, 30 to 50, 75. Hmm. And um, say we wanted this search for two years. Hmm. So it will be, be mobilizing something like 10 to maybe 2,000 crores a month. Right. So this is a proposal we made. We made this proposal because we didn't want to uh, yeah, now put um, additional burden on many other states, our own consumers. Mm. It wouldn't affect the industry, it wouldn't affect the income to the center, uh, it could affect us. There would be some technical problems, okay. like, uh, or, um, say, we have to change the software a bit, and so on. Mm. Otherwise, I don't find anything Mr. Isaac, you said that you didn't want to burden the centre or any other states, and hence you proposed this 10% levy on uh, SGST on commodities consumed in Kerala. But there is a lot of speculation that could this, uh, could the idea of a 1% national cess uh, on sin goods be taken forward? Has there been any conversation on a national cess of 1% on sin goods in lieu of a 10% cess that you had proposed? Um, I have uh, the finance minister, the secretary, the special secretary, and so on, um, two days back in Delhi. And the finance minister was gracious enough to propose that that we have a national cess on singles. Okay. Now this will be some isolated case or exceptional case for Kerala. Mm. There will be demands like this for state governments, various parts of the country, due to natural calamities. And all states should together support them. Now if it is a national search, you don't have to put it for many months, perhaps a, a month or a two or three months. Okay. It should gather okay. sufficient revenue and, and drop it. So it will be uh, uh, as and when time occurs. Uh, okay. With these rises, we have a, a special cess for disaster. Uh, I, I just, well, want, I just want to understand this better, sir. You said that you had a meeting with the finance minister, with the revenue secretary, with the expenditure secretary. So the idea of a national cess on sin goods uh, for a, a, a period of about two to three months was an idea that has been put forward by the centre? That's fine, the United Finance Minister, because central government a uh, few months back had put forward an idea of a search for sugar. Mm. Then um, I had objected to it, saying that uh, rubber uh, growers in my state also require special support. Mm. Mm. So we had a ministerial committee to look into that, and in our discussions, I have put forward a proposal. Mm. Let's have a special search permanent. Okay. Which would raise a fund which would be placed for states with agrarian distrust. Okay, all right. So that's on the GST. But moving on, the government will be announcing its second half borrowing calendar today, important for bond yields. Lata is here to give us a sense in terms of what the expectations are. Lata Monica. Okay, uh, well, the overall borrowing that we know from the uh, budget papers is that the government has to borrow 6.06 .06 lakh crore. Uh, not 6.6, .6, okay, 6.06 .06 lakh crore, that's a mistake. 6.06 .06 .06 lakh crore for the full year, of which 47.5% has already been borrowed in the first half. And that amounted to 2.88 lakh crore. So the balance is what they have to borrow. That balance would be 6.06 .06 lakh crore 
minus 2.88 lakh crore would come to 3.18. But 3.18 is not what they will borrow because the government made an uh, announcement along with the borrowing calendar uh, earlier that 50,000 crore will come partly from small scale uh, savings and partly from fewer buybacks that it will do. So the expectation is 3.18 lakh crore minus 50,000, which is a 2.68 lakh crore. So long as the borrowing calendar is 2.68 lakh crore, the market will be okay. If you disturb the market and put even 5,000 crore more, uh, this market, which is already very jittery, can uh, cannot take the shock, may not be able to take the shock. Also, market, uh, I mean, within the details, about 12,000 crore is being borrowed every week, of which 5,000 crore has been in 10 years. And that is another number they may watch, uh, but uh, that's of uh, less detail than this 2.6 lakh crore overall number. Uh, remember, the, this is the first time that the market, the government has borrowed less from the first half, that is 47.5. In past years, they used to borrow 60% in the first half because that is the slack season. The second half is the busy season even for private sector to borrow. But this time they had to do that because of disturbances in the bond market. and. Uh, uh, that is why it is difficult to expect that anything more than 2.68 lakh crore will be accepted. Uh, just remember that number when the borrowing calendar comes. Okay. All right, Lata. Thanks very much for that. So important from a macro standpoint. But uh, we need to take a break now. Up next, the promoters of the online pharmacy Farm Easy have raised $50 million from a clutch of investors. We'll get you an excerpt from the management on the other side. Stay tuned.